everybody. Welcome to the Silver Towel Battle Report. I'm back with Danny, and we're going to the realm of Akshi this time around. After the Shard of Akshi, um, we're still wandering around through the Silver Tower. Uh, we've once again got the chance to grab one of the shards. There's two shards left, leading up to the final showdown with the Gaunt Summoner. So, um, the adventurers have, have been drawn together again for another adventure. We'll show you the table layout. We're going to get to jump into the first section and our uh, current state of our characters, and we'll get started. So, for my half, we've got the Lord Castellant and the Battle Mage. Lord Castellant is currently walking around with Living Fortress. Um, roll a die each time your hero suffers a wound on a six, they get stunned. And if he's unrelenting, I get to add plus one to the roll for already wound he already has. So if he's on his last wound, uh, basically on a three plus, he just remains stunned instead. Divine Will, um, other players can reroll attack rolls of one if your hero's in the same chamber. If I'm holy, all players on the table get it, but I'm not playing first hand, I'm just Celestial and Unrelenting. And then Reaper of Lives, uh, on a, a six dice, I can make any of my combat attacks. If I roll a six to hit, it doubles in damage, which is awesome. And then my Battle Mage, um, who's pretty teched out right now. He has Battle Wrath, where whenever he slays an enemy, his lowest die goes up by one. Uh, chosen, after making your action roll, add one to the score of the lowest hero dice. So anytime I do that, if he was holy, I could do two, but he's not. So basically what happens is every time he makes a three plus bolt attack, his ones and twos start to climb. And if he kills someone with a bolt attack, they climb again and again. So like, if I have a one on my card, it becomes a three immediately if I do a, a shot that kills somebody. Which means I almost always get to use all of my actions to use um, Arcane Bolt, which is super sweet. Then he has uh, one step ahead, once per turn, increase the decrease of result of a behavior roll for characters, by, or for monsters, by one. The Mistweaver Shay has got evasive. Before making a save roll, roll a die. If it's higher than the attack roll, it just gets away. Uh, and it's swift. You will also dodge if you roll the same as the attack roll, which is, of course, it's Mistweaver Shay. She's, she's swift. Airstrider, leap two plus. You move here at D3 spaces. You don't need to make a pinning roll at all. You just go through any miniatures. And if you're a swift, move three spaces. You always roll three. Honed Mide, concentrate for one plus, add a die to, uh, to add one to the score of any of your hero dice. Um, and Supreme Focus, six plus, add one to the score of all your hero dice. So you can tech your dice up to, again, make more illusory assaults. And the Tenebral Shard, Etheric Surge, when you roll six to make an attack, add a hero dice with a one to your hero card. So he gets to basically make more Blade Barbs attacks every time he makes an attack. <laughs> Ward Answer, once per turn, your hero can move up to one space for making a combat action. And you can do this more than once in a turn because he's Bladeborn. And then Unstoppable, every time you slay an adjacent adversary, you can immediately move D3 space without moving action dice. You still make paying tests as normal. Um, so yeah, makes makes this guy clear room real good. We begin the Shard of Akshi, and that place the champions found but one way forward, an ominous tunnel set low in a solid wall of brass. With little choice, they fell to their hands and knees, crawling one after another into the steaming darkness. The further they crawled, the greater the temperature became. At this champion's heels, the tunnel rambled shut like a closing gullet of some terrible beast. For long moments, they crawled with even greater haste, sweat running freely from their scalded faces at the touch of hot brass. Surely this must be the quest's end, they thought, and a hideous one at that, roasted alive in a cramped oven. Just as they felt they could crawl no further, the champions scrambled from the hideous tunnel into the sweltering space beyond. Grimacing with pain and anger, the champions came to the realization they'd passed through a particularly unpleasant portal and into the beginning of the next deadly trial. So we'll take our usual formation in the portal chamber. The deck has been set for the trial of Akshi. And as we come out of the giant sweltering oven, we emerge into beyond the glass. Moments pass before the champions realized what unsettled them so about this place. Within a great mirror, their reflections moved, but all subtly wrong. The movement's unnatural and out of sync with those they aped. So in Beyond the Glass, whenever you make an action roll inside that chamber, any rolls of one get discarded, so you're losing dice, and we have to roll on Encounter Table B. Encounter Table B will give us a d6. Five is gonna be a blue horror per player, so. Four blue horrors. Sorry, two blue horrors. Four blue horrors. I'm not talking about it because there's four players. So remaining here dice for my Lord Castellan are four, five, five. Um, he's going to move, I think, uh, into the room full of blue horrors and go one, two, and then he's going to spend his four to make a warding, or sorry, Castellan's halberd attack on a four. So looking for a four plus. Whoops. Grab the dice to roll, that is actually one of my action dice. And, nope, we miss. Try again. We hit. Uh, so it's going to do two damage to that guy, and he'll split into two Brimstone Horrors. Our last attack, we'll squish this guy right here. And we don't. He's going in, can clear the room of Shard. No. Oh, good thing you're not in the room, because all those ones are going to be bad otherwise. Uh, and you get to spend one, I guess, to dive in. And start stabbing. Actually. Ward answer in for free because it doesn't cost you anything and make a blade barb. And miss. <laughs> I'll do it again. And do it again. And hit this time. So one damage. So one damage, yep, on the blue horror. And then last one. 
Does one damage and slays him. Becomes a horror. Just gonna stab the little horror. Terms for horror. And you hit him, does one, which explodes him. And now you can move D3, because you slew an enemy from War Dancer or Unstoppable. Move three, but you only get to move one square. And he's all done. All right, Battle Mage, let's see what you got. Time to zap some dudes. Uh, we get two twos. Now this is where it becomes super handy that I have the ability that I have. All right, so we're gonna spend our three and do a, um, uh, what's it called? A uh, attack, and as soon as I make the action, the lowest die becomes a three. Whoops. We're doing the Brimstone Horror, and we hit him uh, on three plus, and we do D3 damage, we only need one. So we slay him, so as soon as we slay somebody, now this becomes a three, so exactly what needs to happen, happened, and all my lowest dice start to turn up. He will Arcane Bolt again with the lowest die, which is a three, into that blue horror, and hit him with a six, and then uh, the lowest die, because I made the action, becomes a four. Whoops. Uh, and then do I slay him? I do, with three damage, and he becomes a Brimstone Horror. Makes my lowest die a five. I use the four, which immediately makes my lowest die a six, <laughs> to try and kill the other blue horror. And I miss. And then use that 6 to proc Mystic Shield, which means I immediately get a Renown. Get one from killing the blue horror, and then a bonus one because he uses both his spells in one turn. And I won't bother trying to uh, steal the last of the Destiny dice. You can go ahead with the Mistweaver and blow up those dudes. Mistweaver gets a 2, 3, 3, 4. Illusionary Assault, yep. 3 plus. Misses. Hits. D3 damage. Kills him and becomes a brimstone, and you get an experience. Two more. All right, we got two more brimstone horrors to kill. So three plus doesn't hit, and the last one, which is destiny die, will potentially hit. Try again. Two. Yeah, it'll kill. So I kill one of the two. Doesn't matter how much damage. I got one wound. Start to move. One, two. Just move into the room. Three. Sounds good. Behavior for the horrors. A two. Blue fire. Okay. Or flickering blade. Okay, well he's already in range, so it's probably gonna be blue fire. After the Mistweaver. Uh, and it's gonna be on A. Five plus. Five plus, see if he hits. Does not. And he's done. We're now rune marks, so go roll, roll our destiny dice. See what we get. And it's gonna be two fives. What happens? No events on two fives, so uh, you can choose who wants to activate first. Sure. Give me shard, shard's going. No ones to discard, that's handy. Move one free before he fights because of uh, War Dancer, and then he's gonna stab on two plus, kills him. No XP though for the Brimstones. And you get to move D3 now because you killed somebody. Because, because shard. <laughs> one, two, so you can go to a door if you want. And you can use one to explore. We do have a one on the Destiny Ice. Oh, yeah. Probably easier to use. And let's see what it is. New room. Before we do that, I actually realized that uh, the first tog I put down wrong, it wouldn't have changed clearing this room at all. Like at all, because we just murdered those those little dudes. Um, so this this actually shows up over here. We don't have to split the deck, which we thought we did for a second. Uh, and there was one Grot Scuttling from Encounter Level C that showed up. So go get him, Shard. <laughs> this is a poorly defended area. Destiny board to move. Gonna go one two, stab stab. No, he misses. Okay. And then single stabs, little stabs. Hits one damage. Nah, Last one. Kills him. So you can move D3 if you want. D3, going four. And we're gonna stand in the doorway. All right, so um, let's, there's nothing to have the monsters go for now. So I guess we have Mr. Battle Mage go? Or Mr. Nah, Mr. Lord Castell, gonna go. He's gonna go, and I have to discard any ones from this room. But I don't roll any ones, luckily. Uh, we'll use the three to go. Gonna use the three to move one, two, three. One, two, three. Gonna use a four to move one, two, three. One, two, three. Gonna use a four to go one, two, three. Take up positions, and then we're just done. We've got a Miss Weaver. Assume the position of, of ready to illusionary assault. I've got plenty of sixes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not really any reason to use them though, because there's not gonna be any monsters. I think you just go stand behind us. Four. Yeah. Boop. There you go. Actually, uh, move one more over, and then my battle mage can fit. <laughs> There we go, perfect. As we, as we do our usual formation. All right, Battle Mage. Yeah, I don't have to discard this because I'm not actually in the mirrored room yet. And he moves three, so we're just gonna spend all our low dice to go one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. We have one die left, but it's not worth anything. So we're ready for the next room. And I become rune marked. Let's make the destiny roll. Ooh, that was pretty neat, but double fours, double fives went away. So we've only got a six on the board. What happens though? Double fours, double fives. 
Okay, cool. I'm into it. So uh, we now flip our new location. I'm going to roll for the Lord Castellan. See what he gets. He gets a four, a six. Wow, that's a really good roll. <laughs> I can make all the attacks I want basically here. Uh, I'll burn a four to explore the room and see what we have. The living path. It's going to be a path full of um, the yawning chasm is suddenly filled with skimming fungoid discs. It's a bunch of discs each. They move around and stuff. If an attack roll in this chamber scores a one, they're not chaotic. They have to discard a die because the discs of each just fly around. And let's see what's on a counter level C. It's going to be a four, which is D6 Grot Scuttlings again. <laughs> One! Oh my gosh, this is the worst defended place ever! Ha! This dungeon set us up though, Danny. I feel like like we, we get really cocky and then it's like ogre thermometer just everywhere. <laughs> 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 Alright, so I guess now I move. Uh, I spent a four, I go one, two, I spent a five, and I just smash him with my halberd. And I don't. I uh, spend a six and I smash him with my halberd. I do, and he explodes. Alright, well, off we go. <laughs> Who's going, Shard? All right, so you didn't have to discard any ones because we're not in the mirror room. I think the portal room actually drops off. Now. Oh no, one more and it drops off. Next room it drops off. So you're gonna move. Move four, gonna move again. Might as well explore. Yeah. All right, let's see what it is. It's a imp's horde. Suspended above a churning sea of coins on a treasure shaped platform, the slightest movement, so that the whole thing's swinging. The riches sluicing from its edges like a golden rain. Roll on encounter table B. If a hero makes a move one action in this chamber, it must discard the second hero die. Oh no. Uh, when the last adversary in this chamber slayed, read passage 39. Encounter B. One. A Carrick Acolyte per player and a pink whore. All right, so uh, it is full of dudes this time around. Those, I told you those grots were setting us up. We got Carrick Acolytes everywhere. So you can move one for free before you make an attack, which will not proc the ability in here, which is awesome. And then you can start your stabbing. Now that's a Karak Acolyte with a Halberd. I think he's got four or five wounds. Could kill him in one here if you use your uh, bladed gauntlets. Reaper gauntlets. Doing Reaper it. gauntlets. On a four, hits. And it's D3 wounds, five, six, he's dead. Kills him. So just smokes him, which means you get your free D3 move. D3, it's just gonna go one. Gonna go hop into the pink horror, that makes sense. And you do have a six on the thing. Save it for a bedazzle on the uh, the Shea, so we're not going to use the six off the board here. So it's back over to me, and it's Battle Mage time. You know what to do, Battle Mage. Kill them all. That's what you do. I'm into it. All right, so we've got all the good dice that we need here. And a one, so we're going to spend that three to do a bolt, which will immediately turn this to a two. And I'm in the Iron Spawn room, which is just behavior stuff, so we're good. We're not going to have to blow anything up here. So on a three plus now, we will zap the slow guy with the double... The double weapons, misses, uh, and then we didn't hit, so it doesn't turn this up any higher. So use the five now for the same thing, try and blast him. This turns into a three, because you make an action. Hits, and does D3, five plus he's dead. No, it just does one to him. Find the three now for another one on him, and it hits, does D3, three plus he's dead, kills him. And I think we use the last one for Mystic Shield, and that's gonna put us at uh, two renown because I use both my spells in one turn. Miss Weaver Shea, what you gonna do? Well, we got all the good dice. Move one, up. Two, three, four. Looks good. Five to move. One, two, three. Going for a big stun. Six. Six off the board. Yep. So it's a four plus on everybody. Three plus on each one. Okay, so three plus. It. He's no. not stunned. He's not stunned. Oh, the pink horse is the important one. Get him. Yeah, pink horse stunned. And now we'll launch some bolts. Your assaults. Might as well put them both in the shield guy, yeah, because he's the most likely to die. Hits. And then D3. Uh, does two. You have to do two more to kill him, though. See if you kill him, yeah, last one. Hits. And D3, you need three plus to kill him. Kills him. So the shield guy's down. Another renown for you. Actually, you needed to be back there. Because you have to discard an extra hero dice mm -hmm. to move into there. So... Either well, we didn't do the. Well, we, let's see what the card actually says. If you do a move one action inside, but you weren't doing it when you did the action. That's right. You didn't start it. Okay, that's yeah, right. that makes sense. You're actually fine there. Um, yeah, if he makes the actions of the chamber, he moved into the chamber doing it, but he didn't actually do the thing, so he didn't have to do the second dice. If he starts in there, he probably has to actually discard the second dice. So now they'll have to. All right, so creature behavior. Um, he's stunned, so he just loses his stun, and then the acolyte rolls a six. Fall back. What does he do? Moves towards the nearest portal. Does. If it ends its move on the portal, it flees. Peace out! <laughs> we had twice as many here as Zacolites on the table, and that means he just pieces out, uh, and then the horror becomes unstunned, and you become remarked. Destiny dice! Uh, no doubles! We got a straight flush! Nice. For the Shay. Murder, murder, murder. 
He's great because he gets to move around for free after this, so he can go and explore the next room without us having to like start in there and spend a bunch of action dice. We're going with the pink horror. On a four, hits him, D3. Does one. We're going again. Hits, D3, need a five, six to kill him. Nope, does one left. Bladed barb. Cranks him, does one, just blows him up, turns into two blue horrors. Reaper gauntlet, onto one of the blue horrors. Hits him, D3. Oh, and I get, because the six. Well, that's right, you get an extra die, yep. Yeah, that's right. See so if you get D3, which means you can stab a little horror now. Yep, get two to kill him, turns into a brimstone, which you can now stab. I'm gonna stab the brimstone. Hits him. Oh, another six. And he gets another free one, yep. So that does one damage, it just kills him, yep, but no experience. You wounded three adversaries, which gives you two renown from your berserk, berserker thing. I'm gonna stab this guy again. With your gauntlet, yep. Barb. Get another six, kill him. Nope. Just does one. All right, well, who wants to go first? I think we'll have the battle mage go first. Battle mage, all the threes. All right, let's do a uh, arcane bolt, which will turn this to a two because of my battle wrath, not battle wrath, because of chosen, sorry. Uh, it's on a three plus, hits him, does one, kills him. Uh, and that's gonna turn him into a three. Uh, spin that low die now, which turns this into a four. And we hit him again, and he gets blasted. Let's spend the four then for an action on the battle mage, which actually technically is a move uh, and, and makes my die go up from chosen. And he's gonna move three. One, two, three. Uh, and then, yeah, I get to, Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot to read. Oh no, it's this one. We read thirty nine when everyone's dead. All the bad guys are dead. Yeah. And we just killed all the bad guys actually. So before I move, we have to read that that passage to see what happens. Tinkling of coins ran out as the cha can't champions picked away across the drifts of riches that were familiar uh, that the familiar pug had gathered. With a metallic clatter, the strange being popped up amid the sea of coins, his moon face scowling at this unwarranted intrusion. At the same time, the chamber's portals flickered shut and the treasure chute floor began to tilt madly. First one way, then the other, with spiteful strength, the little familiar pelted the champions with Richards, attempting to force them off the edge. The hero phase ends immediately, set the heroes in the center of the chamber, then the chamber tilts. The runemark player rolls four destiny dice and puts them on the raised platform in the corner of the treasure chamber to show how the platform's tilting. On the count of three, all the players roll their four hero dice, rolling any ones as many times as they want, trying to match the scores of the four destiny dice. The last player to manage this loses their footing and their hero moves one space towards the nearest edge. The chamber tilts once more for each of the players, uh, each player pug, before pug grows bored and gives up. So if there's three players, they'll tilt three more times, okay. If a player loses their footing while at the edge of the chamber, they tumble into the heap riches below and will not participate in any more rolls. Once Pug gives up, each player whose hero is still on the platform can draw a treasure card, and there's a respite. Players who fell from the platform must spend their time clambering back up so they cannot rest or search for treasure. Mind my hero dice, because the hero phase just ended. Um, and we all go into the middle here. Pug shows up, and he rolls four destiny dice, and we have to try and match them. So the four destiny dice are... Two, five... One, four. So what happens is we all move one space towards the edge, and he's gonna do this four times, because there's four heroes here. So we're rolling our dice, and we can reroll any ones as many times as we want. So I have nothing to reroll here, and nothing to reroll here, and I didn't match them at all. So I move one towards the edge, and one towards the edge. Did you manage to match any? No, but I can reroll. Okay. All the ones, nope. So we have to just keep rolling until we either match it or the last person to try and match it. So we don't move yet. What happens is I got the four that I need here. So I'm gonna keep re-rolling. I didn't get, I got none of the dice I needed. I got the two I needed and the five I needed and now I need a one. Keep going, you gotta roll man, it's the same time as me. You do this until we get it, we get it. <laughs> you gotta keep rolling until you get these. And then the battle mage. Gets exactly the roll in one shot. Oh my gosh. And we're done. So Battle Mage went last, which means he moves a square. So now it's four more times. It's like a frenzy thing. We just, on the count of three, start rolling and try and get whatever's here. Oh boy. So double fours, three, one. Start rolling. Don't, don't wait for me. Don't wait for me. Got the double fours. Got the double fours. Got the double fours. Got the double fours. I need a three and a one. I got the three. I need a one. I need a one. I need a one. I need a one. Give me a one. Why don't I have a one? Go on, you're killing me. You're killing the other guy. You're killing the battle mage. He gets it. He gets it. And then we get uh, the double fours we need. And we need a three and a one. A three and a one. We get the three. We need a one. We need a one. 
We get it. All right. So I'm done. Did you finish yet? Sure. No. So shard moves a square uh, and goes this way, and then we go again. <laughs> these little mini games. So it's two, three, five, six. See what you get. Got the two. Need a three, five, six. Need a three, five, six. Got the five. Got the other five. Got the three. Need a two. Need a two. Got it. Over here. Uh, need a three. Got a three. Oh, we got the six, two. I just picked it up. And then we need a five. He's done. So that was Lord Castellan. And then it's one more time. Lots of people near the edge here. It's the last time. Double two is one, four. One, four. One. Keep going, guys. Keep going, guys. Double twos. Four. Need a two. 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 Give me that two. <laughs> this is so frantic. <laughs> Come on. Give me that two. Give me that two. I give up on you. We're going over here. We're going over here. Double fours. We sorry. You need double twos. Get the four. Need a one. Oh, it's me. <laughs> we didn't get him. Who fails first? Blue. Got the one. No, no, he's not done yet. <laughs> I have to figure out who it's going to be. Need a two. Need a two. Uh, nope, need that two. Need the one. Need the four. Need two on both these dice. Whoever gets two first. Get a two first. Get a two first. Ah, okay. So one. Battle Mage falls off. Everybody else gets draw a treasure card. Hug wanders off. His adventure completes. The Battle Mage gets nothing. Everybody else gets to respite and draw a treasure card. Castellans gets a Amulet of Fury. Uh, roll four dice. For each dice that scores a five or six, the adversary suffers a wound. If the amulet causes any wounds, discard this card. Shard gets Wrath Blood. Anytime you, uh, during your turn, you can roll three dice and put them on this card. You can use these dice to make weapon adactions, as though they're hero dice. Discard this card at the end of your turn as long as with any dice are still on it. So you can just like pump up once. We'll need that for, well, it may not survive until we fight the whatchamacallum. We'll need that for the boss, probably. The Celestrium, discard this card anytime. Look at the top three cards of the exploration deck without changing their order. You can show this information if you want. Cool. Everyone's unwounded now. We set them up after the respite in any formation we want, and we roll. I become rune marked for some destiny dice as Pug messed with us, but then gave us lots of riches. Thanks, Pug. Uh, double fours, double sixes all go away, and we have a two on the Destiny board. So an unexpected event occurs, 55. The laws of nature have no purchase in this terrible place, for all the governed by the twisted will of the Gaunt Summoner. Um, space folded upon itself, and down became one of the dimensions. One of the champions was whirled off their feet and spun into the ceiling with terrible force. The rune mark player's heroes removed from the board as they shoot towards the ceiling. At the end of the hero's phase, they return to the close center of the table as possible. <laughs> it's not a soft landing, so they take a wound. Nope. He gets sucked into the sky and misses a turn <laughs> and then takes a wound. Like that thing you got? Uh, roll a dice when I'm suffering a wound. On a six, I get stunned instead. Nope. He's going shard. shard. All right. We got a one to explore with and a two on the board, too. So we'll explore. And what do we find? The Flame Keepers. Um, a, the, scent, the scent of incense hung heavy in the air uh, in this place as the champions advanced. Eyes blinked from the shadows. Encounter label D. If no character depths are set up as a result of this encounter, set uh, one up as well. If any of the point there's a character depth in the chamber with no other adversaries, read 79. And split our deck into two more locations. And let's see who shows up for encounter D. D. Oh no, it's 2 6 thank goodness. Oh no! Oh great Thaumaturge! <laughs> Character adapt because there has to be one automatically. Well, it's a good thing the tank is currently plastered to the ceiling. Um, so as soon as we kill the Thaumaturge and it's only the adept, if at any point there was a character adept in the chamber and no other adversaries, read 79. So we could choose to try and kill him first. <laughs> to make page 79 not happen. Or we could hope page 79 is really good and something cool happens and it's nice. <laughs> I don't trust the game though. Using the six to teleport with Mr. Uh, the Tinkerbell Shard. Oh, when he's going, going in, going right, going right for it. You don't want to get in melee with him, too? No. Okay. Like You've done your, uh, your teleport, which means you can spend a four to make a special attack. This is your double damage attack. That's right. And you miss. Bladed Barb, yep. And it hits, does one damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to spend your Wrath Blood, or you want to... Yeah, I'm going to do it. You want to spend your Wrath Blood? Okay. And he gets D3. He gets three new dice. Oh, but they're all just Barbs, basically. But they could just lead to infinite attacks. Reaper Gauntlet on a four. Hits, does D3. He goes to four damage total. Thaumaturge dies, he gets enraged and comes back with nine more wounds. So we have to chew through 18 wounds here and he's super dangerous once we get him past nine. So we can hit him again with a two plus. Nope, so he goes up to five wounds now. 
And one more, if he's looking for these sixes to chain, he gets it. Ooh, so so one, damage. one damage, and then he chains. Gets a free attack. Ooh. Oh, chains again, gets a free attack. And, nope, one more, so just one more, finally. So he goes to H, he's got one left. We're gonna try and kill him with the Battle Mage. Come on, Battle Mage, you can do this. Yeah, we got exactly what we needed. So we got a six, and a bunch of threes. So the two off the board here for our first attack, which will automatically make this a three, which means I have four more attacks here. So going for an Arcane Bolt. Hits, does D3, does two. Now, I think I lose the excess wound there when he dies, and he comes back now with nine. So he's mad, so now we're gonna spend this three, which will turn this into a four, to bolt him again. We hit him, does D3, uh, does one. And then we're gonna bolt him again, and this becomes a five. See what happens. We hit him, do D3, do one. Oh no, it's the damage rolls are killing me. We're two, bolt him again. We can't kill him ourselves now, but we could kill him with your wrist weaver, and we miss. Uh-oh, and the last one, we hit. And we do two, put him at four. I believe in you. Get him, get him, Miss Weaver. You got what we need. I think you need one to move anyway. Yep. So going one. Oh, but if I move in this room, I have to discard two as well. That's right, yep. So, so going one, two. And then, yeah. You got two bolts. You gotta do five. First one. You can do it. If don't, I concentrate, turn this into a six, I could be dazzled. I don't think you can stun him, though. Yeah, we can't stun him. We gotta kill him. Do it. Do it, three plus, first illusionary assault. Hits him, D3, need that three or four, come on. Or two or three. Yeah, three's got one, sorry, he's got to seven, so you kill him on a three plus now. Illusionary assault, threes. No, we missed. All right, we're going with the big boy. Big boy gets to attack. He gets a two for his behavior roll. You gotta put all your free attacks from him as well. That's okay, we'll, we'll see what he does. What happens with uh, the Thaumaturge? He rolled a two, and I can make it a three or four. He's in rage right now, so he only rolls d6 for his behavior. What's so, a two? This is, he moves towards the most distant hero. Interesting. Well, I, he heals a wound first of all, because he regenerates. And he moves to the most distant hero. That's on a one or a two. Yep. And then he makes an attack? Yes. I'm down with that, so he goes, how far does he move? Four? One, two, three, four. So he makes it over to my mage. Great horror attack, and it makes, adds four. Because he basically bull charges my wizard. So you get to do, uh, to, it's a one plus, he just hits me. How much damage does it do? He needs a six plus to hit. Okay, so he's adding four though, so it's a two plus. Two plus, he hits me. Three damage. Three damage, Blah! The Auric, uh, little dude, what's he called? The uh, Auric Acolyte, Carrick Acolyte. Six for him, one or two, and he runs away. <laughs> so he moves oh, it's a six, me. that's right. Okay, moves towards the shard. And I can make it a three as well if we want. I should make it a three. So he moves towards us still with a three? He moves towards me and then hits me with his uh, Cursed Blade. All right, there you go. Because we'll make that, we'll use the one step ahead to make him attack the shard. Uh, and what's his Cursed Blade do? So roll two dice on four plus he hits. Fours, both hit. I take two damage. And you have no good of the way tech. This is the most beat up we've been in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I got one damage on the Kastan when he comes back. Battle Mage has three, and the Shard's got two on him. We need to, to take a snack break after this, I think. So um, now I arrive, I come plummeting out of the sky as close to the center as possible. That seems close to the center. And uh, yeah, it is now you as Rune Marks. So go ahead and roll. I'm really hoping an imp doesn't show up. That'd be real inconvenient right now. No unexpected events. Uh, no, you're pretty good. Double sixes go away, though. Expected event. 12, that's never good. From nowhere it came, little more than a blur of black cloth and poison blades, the Skaven left and rolled, the Death Runner's mad eyes fixed upon a victim, and it lunged to strike the killing blow. Set up the Skaven Death Runner at the portal that's close to the Remark Blair's hero. No! Oh no wait, my hero's over here. No! That's right, so you'd be over here then. Uh, no, one, two, three, four. One, two, yeah, no, you're there. That's Remember I said I felt like we were getting a little cocky because like it was kind of undefended and we were killing scratlings. Yeah, now it's now it's getting real. All right, Lord Castellan, you need to you need to take a, a murder break, buddy. Let's see what we got here. Uh, one, three, four. All right, I gotta spend the four. Try and kill the big boy because I have to. If I can roll four plus, he's dead. Damage two. Oh, actually, no, it won't even kill him. It does hit him. Um, so he takes two wounds and has one left. I forgot to roll saves my battle mage. Six plus. Nope, took all his wounds. Albert you again, that one, hits him, it's gonna kill the Thaumaturge, Oof. boof. You just get one renown for killing him, and I get D3 on the big boy, 
He gets three. It's actually nice to heal a Castellan. Get him back to full, because we got to fight a Death Runner. Adam Shard. Oh, that's not a great roll. <laughs> we got the six we needed, but we need to be a little bit healthier than that. Got to roll for the quarry of the, uh, the Deuter. I got a two. Two, roll the twos again. It's a Battle Mage. Now we know who he's going after. <laughs> and he's got 13 wounds. We gotta figure out how we're gonna kill this guy. Use your free one square move before you have to go in. And then. And stab. Um, Reaper Gauntlet on the Death Runner. Okay, on two. Hits him, does damage. One. One. And then Bladed Barbs. Bladed Barbs. Nope. Nope, misses. Bladed Barbs. Hits, one does damage. another one. One off the board to heal. And then I'll lock the three, and then... I guess I'll stab him one more time. Stab him one more time, go for it. Hits. For one. And one more. Alright, Battle Mage. He gets a one. I can't do anything with it except for heal. Whoop. You wanna heal? I'm just gonna heal again with the one off the Destiny board. No, keep it, because you can use it for Arcane Blast. Alright, and here comes the Mistweaver. Yeah. There we go, that's what we needed. Some sixes and some threes. I don't think we can dazzle them, unfortunately. See how far we go with Arcane Blast, or uh, the Blast. Illusionary Assaults. Illusionary Assaults. First one, hits, does D3. Whoa, it takes him to six. Second one, misses. No, we can't kill him. Third one, misses. No, we got one left on the board. Hits, does D3. That's three more, it was the nine. Move him around, and we're done. All right, let's see what happens with the Death Runner. He rolls a six. So, oh, set up the second Death Runner miniature. Oh no! Oops. Drop him down, and then we could make it a seven, but it would mean everybody gets throwing starred, which is bad. So you're gonna split in half. They both have nine wounds. He automatically moves out of combat and goes six. He goes one, two, three, four. And then he tries to stab both them, because he goes to as many heroes as he can. And he attacks them with a stab slicer. Three attacks against my battle mage, she's the quarry. And what's your what's your hitting on? Three, two. Uh, three plus. Three plus. Yay! And then I save on a six. Nope. One damage. Take a wound. And then he attacks the Lord Castellans on threes. All hit. Uh oh. Uh, and then Lord Castellan saves on a four. Saves twice. And then a six, he ignores the wound and turns into a stun. Nope. All right, no one died. We're, we're, not, we're not doing too bad. I become rune marked. I calculate Fred. Oh, yes. D6, five. I think he just stabs again. We can't make it a six to run away because unfortunately the Death Runner is sitting there. Um, so he's gonna stab wing. Shard. He's gonna poke me with his blade. Two attacks on Shard, fours. Roll it. Save on a five for Shard. Saves one, takes wounds. Now it's rolling to see what the Destiny board looks like. Oh yes, a straight. We needed that. We needed the no doubles. All right, you made the heroes mad guys. Sorry about this. Uh, we're going first with Lord Castellan. He's got three action dice. That's more like it. He's a six off the board for healing light, um, and that means everybody removes a wound. Because because we're pretty beat up and we didn't like that. Uh, then we're going to hit Mr. Death Runner with our halberd. Nope. Then we're going to hit Mr. Death Runner with our halberd. Yeah, it takes two. Puts him at 11. We're going to use the last one off our board. Hit him again. Nope, we're going to miss. Use this one. We locks the three and try to hit him again on a four. We do kill him. Is it the right one? Win? Two. It's the illusion! <laughs> that means that this one's the real one still with nine wounds on it. All right, it's over to you, Shard. Kill this thing, it needs four wounds. Four little pokes. Oh, you got all the gauntlets in the world. Holy crap, all right. Alrighty. Hits. Hits, D3, does two. two. He's got two left. Reaper gauntlet. Misses. You're not on the same board as me, so you can't reroll the ones. Reaper gauntlet. Hits, and you get a free free extra attack and a free one dice. That's right. <laughs> so let's do the damage. D3 first. wounds. Does two. He's dead. And this has to be the real one. So you gain D3 renown, and everybody else gets one, I believe. Correct. You get two, and everyone else gets one. You learned Wellspring before making an action roll. Discard a uh, roll die for each of your wounds. On a six, you're placed with a stun instead. When the last adversary in the chamber slain, immediately read passage 39. So as soon as the last guy dies, we just, we end the hero phase, and we start torturing this guy. <laughs> So the shard just puts him against the wall and starts asking him questions as to where the flame keepers are. So we roll a die. On a 5-6, we give him a stun marker. On a 1, he gets wounded. And if we keep trying to get him for answers, we keep rolling a dice. Um, if the result is less than the number of stun markers next to the adept, he reveals his secrets and you can keep the flame, the flame keeper's exploration card. Otherwise, he keeps getting wounded. Shard, roll a die. See what happens. 
Nope. Uh, five six. He's position for seven, so he, we don't wound him, um, and we don't stun him either. So now he's wounded uh, because he rolled a six. You're less than the stun markers he has because he pressed for answers. Now try again. Five six. Nope. Uh, roll again. See if he's sufficiently wounded. No, nope. if he'd been wounded or if he'd been um, stunned. We would have done it, but he's now wounded. So, how do we get stun markers? <laughs> you have to roll a uh, five, six to get a stun marker on him. I got a six on my first. Thing. Which oh, you did get a six, so yeah, and then you rolled a one. So actually, then you got an equal to one of the stun markers. So you actually revealed the secrets. That's right. So find the flame keeper's exploration card. Done. Uh, and that's it. So if he reveals the secrets, he disappears because we've interrogated him to, him to the point of revealing everything, and now. The round continues. So you can go set up if you want now, because the round is as the round continues, not start a new round. So no one gets rune marked again. Move one. I'm gonna uh, you explore. Use this two to explore. Alright, and it becomes the abandoned nest. Roll for encounter table C. So we know there's nothing past this. Uh heroes can make his action chamber search on a one plus uh, on a one. Set up a D3 Grot Skellings on a four, five, six. Place a stun marker in this card. The player that draws a third stun marker can draw a treasure card. So this is a continuation portal, but we know that there's nothing past this, so it's kind of a dead end. And we roll on encounter C. Encounter C, we're gonna find three a Grot Skelling per player and an unexpected event. Watch down, and the event is uh, 51. The chamber's floor seems to vanish until the end of the round. Each time a hero tries to move into a space that's in that chamber, they roll a die, and on one or two they stay in their current space, and their action ends immediately. Making your free tag, now roll a die, if you roll one or two, because you moved a square in here, your action ends immediately. You don't, so you're fine, so you move in for free, and then you can make a free stab. Or your stab, sorry. Oh, this is actually... You can do the little baby stab or the big stab? You can do the gauntlet, there you go. Blade of gauntlet, misses. Of course. And blade of gauntlet, hits, D3. Just one. Oh, that was just a barb, okay. Little stab, hits, and just kills that last guard scout line. Bottom is gonna go, he's going to roll some action dice. I get a two and a three. Uh, and he's just gonna use both these to heal. And then he's gonna use this three off the board to blast that Grot Scuttling. And he hits him, does D3. Does three, kill him. That, that's the one I was trying to kill. <laughs> Mystery Roche, gonna get all kinds of actions. Move, going one, two, just so you can see him. Assault, hits, does D3. Don't roll one or two, nope, kills him. Want to walk in, don't roll one or two. Nope, nope he There's... stops, sends his action. We become rune marked, so, and we have sure. this little guy go. What's he gonna do? A four. Moves. Boop, and shoots for a four plus bow time misses and what do we say destiny trip fours and a one and a five now, that is no random encounter so we are on to your first activation and we're going for the mystery roche first get an okay roll enough for a lot of movements and explores if we want to and at least one zap of a dude Let's see if you zap him three plus hits him three plus to kill him no it is one five off the board just do it yeah it's fine hit him again yeah, now he's dead. Go out, go explore. I have to roll to see if I lose everything. Yeah, else. don't go one, two. No, no. Done. Only for the last round. This is a new round. You're fine. That was an unexpected event when the floor started disappearing. So you're actually fine. You can just move. So just one, two, three, four. <laughs> and now you can explore. Or not. Uh -huh. we can, I mean, you can teleport in the room with shards, so. I'll do it all. What do we find? The. Warrior's Gaze. Man, we're going right to the end here. Okay. Two statues stood here, twisted archetypes of warrior and a wizard. For all their strangeness, some hit of nobility still clung to the warrior statue. And beneath its approving gaze, the champions felt empowered. If you hear in this chamber gains any renown, gain one more point than normal. Counter A is 2d6. Get some mid-range seven, one Carrick Acolyte per player and D3 Blue Horrors. Lots of renown available here. We just gotta get inside. Uh, so you've got a die left. You could back off. I would back off to like there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> just just for later purposes. Get a long walk with big boy. Let's see where we go. Uh, we're gonna go big numbers, no whammy, but that could actually be handy because we're gonna spend off the board plus an additional one to get out of this room and go one, two, three. We're gonna move again and go one, two, three. We're gonna move again and go one, two, and we're gonna lantern. All the dudes. Lantern no whammy. All right, so uh, if I roll a six here, you take D3 wounds and then are stunned. So the Acolyte takes D3 wounds. Five plus. No, he's got two on him and he's stunned. And then the next guy, so this guy, Acolyte, uh, gets hit, so he's just stunned. Because the shield ones have four, right? 
<clears throat> Blue horror time, you're the best, Mr. Warding Lantern. Get stunned as well. So it happens you spend a couple of turns plastered to the ceiling. You get real mad. <laughs> Alright, Shard, you think you can go teleport in the middle of all this? Go yes, clear the room. Absolutely can. Oh, and I killed a guy, so I get two renown because of the warrior's gaze. Teleport, Zamp. You are gonna get so much experience right now. Start with him, you teleport because you do double damage here with the barb strike. You hit, you get a free wound and a free attack. Yes. So you get a free one dice. He dies, you get two renown for that because of the warrior's gaze. Now you get a free attack. Uh, well, you can blade a gauntlet it too. Action of your choice. Yeah. So all gauntlet this This gauntlet. guy, that makes sense, the not shield guy because you could kill him on a three. Misses. Um, and then you get uh, one of your little stabs. A little stab will kill him because he has two wins on him already. Two plus, kills him. So you get two more renown because you killed a guy in the room. <laughs> now you'll actually get renown for a brimstone horror now because you get the bonus renown. You don't get the normal renown, but you would get the warrior's gaze one. So if you want to two plus him as well, you can. You do, and you get a renown for it. One action left, it'll unstun somebody though, but my whiz can go potentially blow them up. Soften the shield guy, cool, two plus. Hits him, free attack and free dice. Oh, you're not gonna soften up, you're gonna kill him right now. Free attack with the gauntlet, I assume. Hits him, gets another free attack and a free dice. I knew this was gonna happen. Okay, so I knew this was gonna happen. D3 damage, does one, converts to one. Yes. Just one on him right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, and then your free, another free attack and a free damage. Oh, sorry, he's got two on him now, actually, because you got your free one from the first barb. Uh, and you have another free attack, so three plus. Okay, so hits him, D3 damage. Yep, <laughs> he's dead. You have two more little stabs. I love it when you do this. <laughs> little stab, hit him, hit him. Nope, misses. Let's stab again. Nope, and he got two renowned for that, by the way, because of the warrior's case. Uh, Does one and converts from a stun. Well, he's unstunned now, but Shard just went crazy and earned like eight experience. No, because one was a brimstone horror, so nine experience in one go. Well, oh, Battle Mage, you're gonna have a hard time uh, out doing that, so you get to get some dice. Go take a walk. Uh, it costs you two to walk, though. So you're gonna go one, two, three, and then you're gonna zapify this Karak Atlite, uh, which turned this into a six. Hits on a three, misses. Uh, can't reroll one, so I'm not in the same room as him. Try one more time. Hits, D3. Kills him. One renown though, because I'm not in the room with the statue. And that's that. <laughs> oh, Shard, you're the best. All right, random encounter time. I'm rune marked. Straight flush. Uh, double twos. No one has two or more treasure cards, so nothing happens. All right, big boy. Go open the room. Go, go seal the deal. Fight the boss. So we get lots of threes and a four. One off here, move. We'll go one, two. Actually, would have to be there because I technically can't clip that corner. Uh, and then we'll spend a three to explore. And what is it? It's read passage 48 and roll twice on encounter table B. At the start of every adversary phase, everyone suffers a wound for each column of fire that has not yet been blocked. Oh my gosh. Everyone just takes two moves. Raging heat and searing multicolored light struck the champions like a physical blow as they entered the next chamber. A Zinchian faint it was, swirling with scintillating colors and reeking of sulfur and brimstone. From strange pits in the chamber's floor, wildly turning columns of unnatural fire leapt high towards the scorch, the ceiling black with their wrath. Amidst these curling tentacular conflagrations danced strange and unnatural figures, and among them drifted a glinting fragment of the amulet the champions sought. So every turn you're in the room, you take two wounds, as long as these are uncovered. Unless you have the Flame Keeper's card, which Shard does, which makes him immune to the damage, which means it looks like I'm holding the door, Shard's going in to move the columns, luckily he can teleport. Um, on a 4 plus, you can move these one closer uh, as you heave them towards the fire. And we have to roll twice on encounter B. Encounter B, the first one is 4, so 2 Karak Acolytes and D3 Blue Horrors. And six, one Karak Acolyte per player. So it's going to be six Karak Acolytes and D3 Blue Horrors. It's gonna be two blue horrors. So lanterning is currently not an option because I have nowhere to fit in here and I also don't have any sixes. Uh, so we're gonna have to figure out how we wanna do this. Well, I guess it's just halberd o'clock. <laughs> Let's start halberding. Um, I can one shot the horrors, so we're gonna start trying to do that. Um, and we'll hit, oops, these is actually lined up like this. We'll hit the one in front of us, first one. We miss him, second one. We hit him, uh, do two damage, so he splits into brimstone. Third action, we'll hit him again. And we hit him, so this one is into brimstone. That levels up Mr. Lord Castellan, so let's see what he gets. Learn Vengeful Strike. If I roll a six when I make a save, I get a free action. Handy here, because if they stab me, I get to hit them with my halberd. <laughs> we're done, because we're going to let you go heave that thing closed. Get him, shard. Never needed a six more than right now. <laughs> you got two. Teleport. Can I teleport in the middle, everybody? Oh, hit this guy. Yeah, going for the big stabs. Nice. 
Reaper Gauntlet. Reaper Gauntlet on a three. Nope. And again, I guess. Yep, might as well. Hits him, D3. Five plus kills him, dead. Use a five off the board there to hit the Halberd Man. Reaper Gauntlet, misses. Uh, four's locked. The four locked when you use the five. Yeah, so you got the three left. Gonna stab. Hits. Just one. Okay, I'll just kill Brimstone Horror with that. And that's shard done. Final mage going in. Got some moves. Got some fours and fives. We're gonna move. One, two, three. We're gonna spend a three to move. One, two, three. We're going to zap the Halberd Man with the four, which turns the five into a six. We hit him D three times. Takes one. The four off the board to do it again. He's got one of them so far. We hit him. He three plus to kill him. We kill Albert Man. Use the six for the Arcane Shield to add plus one of my saves for me and anyone else in the chamber because I think that makes sense right now because it's going to get him a lot of free attacks, I hope. Um, and then I earn an extra round, which means I love these both my spells in one turn. And what do we want? Uh, nope. Eye of Fate. Put a stun marker in this card until the end of the round. While you're there, you can reroll save rolls of one if your hero is celestial. Other players whose heroes are in the same chamber or yours could do the same. You missed Weaver. Now is when you missed Weave. There you go. Move. I think you stand there. You can probably see these two guys. Which is good enough. Blasting him. Yep. Caracacolite on a three with illusionary assault. Misses again. Hits him. D D3. Kills him. Get her now. Forward again. Hits him, D3, this was the mister of the other guy. Oh, it only does one. It looks like that, so it's now time to uh, have the monsters go. So we'll do the horror first, see what he does. He gets a three. We, got, we all got extra renown for every guy we killed in here because we're still in the Warriors games room. <laughs> so I killed two guys with him, so that's gonna give me an extra two renown. Uh, you killed a guy, so you get a bonus renown. And my battle mage killed a guy, so he gets extra renown too. So his agility one plus, he's gonna move so there's as many guys in the room as possible, so he moves into the warrior room. And then he does his pink fire. Yes, and then he's destroyed. Got it. And the pink fire is, everybody gets hit on a... Five plus. How many dice? Just, Just one? one. He bursts. Me. Okay. So five plus for Lord Castellan. Nope. Uh, five plus for the Mistweaver. Nope. Battle mage. Nope. And he blows up. Acolytes. One. Move towards people and make attacks. They all move towards me. Yep. Well, I was equidistant in this case. Sure. So there you go. We'll split it up. Make it fair. Double weapon guy. We'll try and establish the mister, the, sorry, the... Uh, so four dice. Tebow shard, so four dice. Looking for... Four plus. Four pluses. One. Save it. Five up. Nope, shard takes a wound. The shield man gets two dice. Yes. One, save it on a five. You're good. And then Mr. Halberd Man attacks the Lord Castellant. Yes. And he's got two dice. two dice. Two hits. Oh, I get three plus saves, and if I roll any sixes, I get attacks. Uh, that's a five, which passes. He takes two damage. He takes two. Any sixes, I ignore that damage. No. All right, so we are now done the creature phase, and it's on to a new turn. Let's do... You was remarked, and please, no unexpected events. Well, that's straight flush, do it. Oh, uh, we lose our sixes, but we get a two, three, five. I think nobody has two unexpected treasures. Event. Is it an unexpected event automatically? Okay. We get, it's going to be a 31. With every footfall, the champions get more convinced they're being followed. Small twisted figures scuttle in the dark. Everybody gets a stun, and then we get uh, D6 Grot Skellings, and the remark player plays them. We have to put them as close to the heroes as possible. D6. Six! Six Scuttling Show. All right, so starting with you, you place one as close to the heroes as possible. So it's gonna be us there. We just keep filling in. I'm just gonna keep filling in. I think it's this, this, that. Looks like it's time to start murdering some dudes. What do you get for your activations? Lots of sixes? Six and a three, but also because of Wellspring. Uh, roll a dice for the wound. If it's six, no, never mind. It's not ignored. We're going on that fella. He's wounded. Three plus. Hits him. Gets a free attack and a free die. Because, of course, you do. <laughs> uh, does one. Still alive. Two, uh, free Reaper Gauntlet into Shield Man. Yeah, makes sense. Hits him. Gets another free attack and a free die. <laughs> you always do this. God does three. And now your free attack and your free die. So another free attack. So, uh, free attack will do Reaper Gauntlet on this. Of course, guy. of course. 
Hits him, D3. Kills him. So it kills the Scuttling to gain a Renown. And you level again. You life point. So if you uh, want to spend a six die, you make an adjacent model, you roll higher than their vigor, and they just die. Um, and now you've got a bunch of little free stabs. One will kill him, and one will kill him. Mm -hmm. Just spend your ones. Yeah. Two plus. Doesn't matter which one. Kill one of them. Yep. Yeah. Get another Renown. Mm -hmm. Two plus on the other guy. Hits him. Free attack and a free dead. Yep. This is how we do it. Get him with the D3 again, Solid get him gone with that guy. On him. Makes sense, 3 plus, doesn't hit. And it's a free little stabs. So, little stab on him. 2 plus. Nope, nope. last little stab. Hits, does 1 damage. One For a guy who only had 2 actions, that was pretty good. Gonna use one more 2 off the board, try and stab this guy with the halberd. But we'll Do it. kill him though. Yeah, but you might get extra attack. No, oh, but it does another one. Big boy, he gets 1. Yeah! Uh, I guess he just tries to spend that to stabify the wounded halberd guy, and we miss. Uh, but I can reroll one. No, I, I don't get to reroll myself because I'm not uh, holy. I'm just gonna spend the three off this board to heal. Whoop. You're lucky. You're not in uh, base to base with anybody, so you can use your bolts. That's important. Oh yeah. So you got all the dice you need. Oh, I rolled too many. That's right, you only got three. Oh, that was too bad, because you got a, a six in there. No, oh, no, now you can't do anything. Literally. Spend one to concentrate to make one of his twos a three. And he's got two blasts that way, one off the board, one somewhere else. Gonna zap him. Three plus, hits him, D3. Kills him, blop, so get him down. Off the board, do it again. Hits, D3. Kills, Daw does one. Extra down, because you're in the Hall of Heroes as well, so you actually level. And what do you get? And coordinate, try and hand dice to other people. Yeah. All right. Uh, and you got no dice slot, so you have a two left, so you could move if you want. Just burn that last dice to stand there, and it's battle mage time. Oh, he gets bad dice, one, one, four. So you'll spend the one to battle mage staff this little grot and try and kill him, four plus. Does it, kills him, this becomes a two. Two gives him in the room. Then we'll spend this four to zapify this Karak Acolyte, which turns this into a three for another zap. Uh, hits him, and kills him with two. One left, which we'll use to zap him, and we miss. The Grots, a one. They get mad. Where's the newest hero? So this guy's gonna go over here. On yep. I have to roll this with webs, so I have to roll a two plus to avoid the web. I do two plus to avoid the web. I do, and then for the shard, he's fine. And then we get stabbed, so the double stab a guy into my uh, two five pluses, two five ups into my battle mage. One hit, save on a six. Nope, take a wound. Right, two dice, he's got two stabbers. Yeah, two extra dice. Hit him again. Do I make my save? I don't. He's got a stab on a spear. Two attacks, five up with two damage because of the spear. Both miss. And then in the shard, he's got a bow. One miss. No, everything misses. You have rune marked, and it's a new turn. Double ones, double fours. Expected events, we get a 22. A terrible avian shriek split the air. The hunting cry of creatures twisted irredeemably by the will of Zinch. Set up one Zangor per player as close as possible to the next unexplored exit to the Runemark player's hero. Um, set up to the nearest portal instead. Four Zangors arrive and just choke everything. <laughs> a, a host of Zangors appears. Let's go, big boy. Kiss down what's going. Yeah, that's how we do. That's how we do. Well, let's use this six, and we're going to lantern attack the room we're in. Because of course we are. So the first Grot Scuttling... Uh, is not stunned. The first Zangor is stunned and takes D3 wounds. Takes two. Right. Next Grot Scuttling uh, is not stunned. The last Zangor is not stunned. Three off the battle board to stab that Grot. And we hit him. So he takes two and just dies. And I earn two renown because I'm in the hero room. This uh, Zangor, four plus. We miss. Last die, four plus. We miss. Right. Out. Over to you. Five wounds. Five wounds, I think, the base. Seven. Yeah, that's right. These guys are super tough beastmen. What do you got, Shard? Big numbers, no whammy. Oh, no. Gross. Now is the turn where the little stabs become important. Your one free move because of your move before you attack. Yeah. Start with the... Do a little stab. Rot. Okay. Little no stab. stab. That's, that's right. <laughs> Two plus. Blade barbs. Does a wound. Try it again. Does a wound. So he's dead. That gives you a D3 move if you want it. Left bladed barbs. Just gonna hope for the exploding sixes. That's all I can do. Do it. Stab him. Nope. Just doesn't. He's just not feeling well, and gets a one and a six. I feel like we kind of need Mystic Shield, and I don't have much else. So yeah, we're gonna put up Mystic Shield, 
and then we're just gonna try and um, battle mage staff this grot. Actually, the guy with the shield, because it gets him started. I hit him. So uh, I do a wound, and that's it. Right, go get him, Miss Weaver. Oh no, three ones and a three. Oh. Try and zap this guy with the illusionary assault. Three plus, gets him, D3. Won't kill him, put some hurt down, goes to three. Twice, turn that into a three. He's gonna try and kill this last guy. Hits, D3, you need three plus to kill him. Yeah, yeah. Zangor down, you get two experience. Get us for that concentration ability. All right, we're into the uh, adversary step, and luckily we have our um, Mystic Shield up, so hopefully I get some free attacks out of this. Let's do the Grot Scuttling first. He rolls a one, two plus to avoid the web. No, I get webbed, I get a stun marker on the battle mage. He goes after me four times, there's a little stab of fives, nothing. Two active Zangors, get a five. Just straight up attack and attack. Savage Blade. All right, so the shield guy is a Savage Blade. How many dice? Two on three plus. Two on three plus. All right, Mr. Lord Castellans hits him handsome. Um, and then he gets two saves of three plus and fives and sixes mean I get to attack back. Nothing, but I make one. So I uh, take how much damage? So you take one from that. Okay. And then this is beak. four plus. All right, a four plus. And hits, make a save, get a free attack back. Uh, so I'll try and stab him on a four. We hit him. Oh, he just takes two damage. Did you try and beak me? All right, and then this guy's got, I think, four attacks. This is yep, on to Shay. Four attacks. All right, looking for three threes. Plus. One, two. Two saves. Five, plus. Five up. He's good for one, takes one. Beak attacks four you plus. on a four. And hits, five up. No, oh, takes another one. Oh, this is this is getting dicey. This has been the match where I think we got cocky about how good our team was, <laughs> and then it all went horribly wrong. So it's over to you. And let's not get any more unexpected events. No more beastmen pouring through the doors. Let's roll a nice, nice, tame, straight flush here with lots of lots of high dice. Uh, double twos. Nothing happens. No, no one has two or more treasure cards, so we're good. And you get to go first. Oh. Miss Weaver's gonna go first. Oh, oh, no, the shard's gonna go first. Okay, cool. If you want. Bring the one off the board heal up. to heal up. That locks the five. And that locks the five. And then you could bladed gauntlet somebody if you want. And hope for a six. For the gauntlet strike in him. Looks good. Hits. And does do two. So he's got three left. Or sorry, two left. I forgot to roll for this damage to see if I was stunned or not. No, I wasn't stunned. Oh, I roll for this as well. <laughs> And Shar gets roll for his to see if they turn into stunts from Wellspring. No. Lord Castellan, big turn, buddy. We get six. Yeah, we got it. All right. So let's spend that six and lantern light everybody. Everybody pulls a wound off. Three off the board. Try and kill this guy in front of me on a four. I hit him. Does two. He's got one left. Hit him again. And we do. So he just dies. And I gain two renown because I'm in the hero chamber. Go, Miss Weaver. Clear the board. Yeah, there we go. Blast the grot. Illusionary assault. No. Reroll ones. Reroll ones because I'm in the room with you. Nah, irrelevant. Oh. Try again. Hits, D3, three plus. No, dicks one. Use the five off the board, sure. Hits. Does one, kills him. In two. And it's battle mage time. Hold on. You get two, two left, don't you? Uh, you can kill him, he's only got two wounds left. As well, yeah, go for it. Hits him, D3, kills him. Six wounds, and you get two because once again you're in the hero chamber. Bring your last dice and stay where you are. And it's battle mage time. Battle mage only has two actions, and we get the numbers we need. So let's do a uh, what is it? A um, bolt onto that guy. Misses. Bolt on that guy again. Hits him. T three. Need five. Nope. Does two. He's got four, so he's got one left. Just the acolyte or the Zangor story. What does he do? Six. Four. He's gonna move towards me, and then Savage Blade me. Yep, so two and then three plus. Okay, two and threes, two hits, four plus saves for Lord Castellans, and he is uh, sixes fight back. Makes one, fails one, so he takes two, two damage. damage, and then you beak attack him. Yes. Could kill him. Hits, do I save? I do. New turn, please don't, please don't expect an encounter. One, three, four, five, six, straight! I rolled a straight! Castellan, get your work done, buddy. Yes! Um, do, I'm just gonna lantern that again. Healing lantern, everybody pulls a wound off. One off the board to Halberd. I miss, but I can't reroll my own ones. Locks the six, use the three off the board to Halberd. I kill him. And I gain two. We have to cover these before the encounter actually ends. That means we have the possibility of more unexpected encounters. So, get on it, Shard. 
Yeah, it's, uh, you need you need all these fours to push. So one to move. You have to move adjacent. Use two of the fours off here. So the four and the five, which will lock the six to push it twice. You cover the first one. One, two. And you've got more move arounds. So you might as well move around again and go stand next to the other one. Uh, and we can't make anything else a four plus. So that's that. Let's see what the battle mage gets because he might be able to go close this last one off. It's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, we get two, three, four, five. So we have two pushes and two moves. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it's, uh, no, we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, and then we can move it and then move it again. So I need to spend six, seven, and then yeah. I take one damage. And I use one off the board, and I use one other one, and we move them on. And there we go. Without risking a random encounter, we took an injury in the Battle Mage, but we've managed to close off all the, the fire, and we gain the Shard of Akshi. And we've done it. We've got the Shard of Akshi, which means we are one shard away from facing the Gaunt Summoner. So you'll see that episode in two weeks as we delve back in. This was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I made the joke at the beginning where we had Grot Skellings, like, defending the thing. And then it was, like, midway through the adventure, fight the two hardest things in the game that aren't the Gaunt Summoners. Thaumaturge and the Death Rare show up at the same time, which is about murder the party. So, yeah, no, it's, it's dialing up a little bit. I think it's because... We're so advanced now, we have so much um, as far as like the uh, the upgrades and stuff go. There's not a lot for us to get experience wise, and it means that we're sort of, we're in this weird place right now where all the all the encounters end up being really hard because we always get the random thing that's bad. We never get the good result, we always get the bad result. So we'll see what happens in two weeks as we go for the, the final shard, which is which one? It's the shard of, uh, where is it, Ulgu. Gur? Yep, it's Gur. It's the, the Shroud of Gur is Bestial Rage. Uh, and that's it. So it's the, shroud, the, the, the last shard base we have to find before we go off and fight the Gaunt Summoner. So we'll see you for that one then. Uh, Till then, I'm Ashes Danny. Have more gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Bay Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.